Hello, I'm Colleen Holder and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today's program comes to you from the oldest church building in Tobago, St. Patrick's Anglican at Mount Pleasant. Built in 1843, the St. Patrick's Church is one of the few remaining landmarks of our colonial heritage. As our program continues, we'll tell you more about this special place of worship. But first, a look at our stories this week. The island gets its second dedicated learning and social space for youths as the Argyle Y Zone is commissioned, a school for young mothers and the latest development at Cove Eco Industrial Park. This is Let's Talk Tobago. Welcome back. Today we're at the St. Patrick's Anglican Church at Mount Pleasant. This structure was designed by a Scottish engineer who was not only creative but also thrifty. He used bricks in the church structure after they were used as ballast for cargo ships on the journey to Tobago from England. When the merchant ships docked at the Mount Irvin Estate jetty, the bricks were offloaded and replaced with goods bound for Europe. The bricks were then brought to the Mount Pleasant Estate by the field slaves. But let's leave it there for now and shift focus to Tobago's youths. We recently told you that the youth of Calder Hall have a space to call their own with the first Y-Zone unit. Well, it's Argyle's turn as the community gets its own Y-Zone. Just a stone's throw away from the Argyle Community Centre is one of seven Y-Zones on the island to be set up for youths and activities suited to them. The center not only has free computer services, but computer literacy courses to enhance their skills. Argyle youths can also improve their language skills with the IBG Phonics software or become proficient in the Spanish language through the Rosetta Stone personal tutorial. One Argyle resident, Marlon Gottlieben, sang the praises of the benefits of these resources. Education makes you stand on your own two feet. You might take a while to get through, but you're bound to succeed one day and you're making real money, plenty money day. A young citizen himself, Assistant Secretary in the Division of Community Development and Culture, Ansel Dennis, says that other services can be coordinated by the youths of Argyle as they see necessary. Young people are encouraged to partner with agencies to ensure that services such as counselling, academic support, and health and wellness programs are available at this Y zone. The youth-oriented space was constructed under the Division of Community Development and Culture at approximately $300,000. The youths of Argyle can now sit comfortably in their own space and learn about the world around them. I'm Umidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. As Tobago seeks to diversify its economy, the Cove Eco Industrial Business Park is critical to development. The completion of a second factory building and the installation of the first tenant sees this business park making all the right moves. Omadara Mills has the inside story. The Cove Eco Industrial and Business Park is 140 acres of space reserved for the development of various businesses on the island. With the first factory building commissioned last year, the second one is now completed and available for occupation. The $50 million factory buildings are fully equipped for any business operation, which speaks to the diversity that Tobago is looking to attract. What we have provided within the, the, the factory building um, is more than a shell. It, it gives factory floor space, it provides all the mechanical, electrical and the plumbing facilities. We provide change rooms, we provide an area of mezzanine floor for office. We provide all the, the bathroom and washroom facilities, a loading bay. Cove's management team has embarked on a continuous outreach and a marketing campaign looking for local and international clients. We have participated in the Tobago House of Assemblies economic forum that is normally held on, uh, in October of every year. We have also made presentations to the, to, to the, the Chamber of Commerce. We have also gone outside of, of Tobago and we have participated in the Trade and Investment Convention. 
the team has attracted more than 20 interested parties. Owner of Rojas Engineering Limited, Dion Rojas, is the first to occupy the factory space where he intends to carry out his metal production work. He says that the industrial and business park allows him to establish a professional environment for his company. And it's all about operating in an area designated for an industrial operation. If you see the nature of the machine, the size of it, I can't see myself having this in a backyard operation. And Cove allows me as a young entrepreneur to operate legally. Although the second factory building has not been formally commissioned, a second tenant has already been booked. This one is a foreign company which manufactures doors for the international market. The management of the park pointed out that the area and facilities can accommodate a variety of other businesses including agro-processing, information and communication technology, and garment manufacturing. I'm Umidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but do stay with us because when we return, we'll tell you about the important role the Speyside Coral Reef plays in the continuation of Tobago's marine life. This is April and her daughter, Fatima. April is enrolled in the program for adolescent mothers at the Division of Health and Social Services, which primarily targets teenage mothers and their children. This program provides tremendous support through counseling, remedial and continuing education in academics and technical vocational areas in an environment which allows these young mothers to also learn parenting skills and bond with their children. Program Officer of the Unit, Sonia Whitlock, says the unit opened its doors to the public to allow persons to see firsthand what the participants are engaged in and to also get an idea of what role the office plays in ensuring young mothers go on to live meaningful lives. They would have come in to see what our students are doing. Some of the subjects they undertake while they're here, like hairdressing, food and nutrition, computer, sewing. So they would have come in and they would have, the students would have displayed some of the items that they would have done while in class. And in light of that, they would have been able to at least see hands-on what the students are doing. The objectives of the program for adolescent mothers are to reduce the number of teenage pregnancies and also to reduce repeat pregnancies in teenagers, while at the same time giving the participants of the program holistic development, which is partially provided by the social worker Rhea Jones. It reaches all the levels of young ladies here usually see their um, willingness to be part of the program, their willingness to adapt to various challenges, and most importantly, because they are peers, they have peers here who can relate to them, it makes it much easier for us. We also spoke to Mother Tibi Abiola, who has enrolled in the program. She says once a six-month stint is complete, she intends to return to the center, but for a completely different reason. I plan to come back to this program and do over here, dressing and teach other children who come in. April, too, has big plans as she's determined to provide for her daughter. I can also use her skills to make money for me and my baby. Mrs. Whitlock says the program has a lot of success stories. The success stories we see some being there um, having their own business, they're owning their own business. We have some now would have gone on to be fire officers, nurses, teachers, uh, would have even uh, continued education whereby they would have gone to UE and graduated. Fathers in particular are encouraged to be a part of the process of change and development. I'm Lois Vincent for Let's Talk Tobago. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago. Thanks for joining us today at the St. Patrick's Anglican Church at Mount Pleasant. Interesting or strange fact about the construction techniques used for these walls. The whites of eggs and molasses were used to reinforce the binding power of the mortar. 
This must have been the secret to the church's miraculous survival of Hurricane Flora in 1963. This brings us to our next story, which looks at a partnership between the Division of Community Development and Culture and Environment Tobago to get communities involved in protecting their natural resources. Coral reefs were a big topic of discussion. Now, I have serious issues with, issue with um, CPEP. Now, these are the people who are working on the beach on an everyday basis. And often, I have often seen where they are burning plastic and stuff on the beach. So I would like if some sort of um, system, some sort that, you know, to implement some kind of thing to teach them about this beachfront thing because they are doing it on an everyday thing, right? And this is not healthy for the reef. That is a major concern that came out of the meeting in Speyside. But what the residents found out about their own reef may bring an end to that situation. The Speyside Reef is one of the most important in the Caribbean. Environment Education Coordinator at Environment Tobago, Barry Lovelace, pointed to a 2008 study by the Speyside Marine Area Community-Based Project. Of all the coral reefs in the Caribbean, that research marked the Speyside Reef as the most valuable. Meaning to say, we should protect Speyside by law. We should set it up, have rules and regulations in terms of the governing of the resources of Speyside, of course, including the, involving the community. Mr. Lovelace says the reef is extraordinary. Many divers, seasoned divers, renowned divers, who have, would have dove different reefs in the Caribbean, when they dive at Speyside, they often testify that it's some of the best diving that they have done in their diving experiences. Right? So that's what you have here. It's the, that is yours, is your heritage. Right? People are coming in, visitors are coming in and saying th those things. However, if the recommendation from the study is brought to fruition, a Speyside Marine Park Authority can be implemented to prevent such things from occurring. An authority that, that zones the area, say, okay, this is the bathing area, this is the no-fist zone, this is activity could happen here, but can't happen here. The Pride of Tobago project will be going into communities across the island to hear their environmental worries. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. St. Patrick's steeple was once used as a beacon for local fishermen while at sea. It was repaired last year by a team of locals with technical assistance from a British team. And while we're on the subject, proper financial planning should be a beacon for every adult. Guidelines on budgeting and saving for retirement are some of the main areas taught at a financial management workshop at Argyle. Omadar Mills files this report. Residents of Argyle and the neighboring communities came out to learn some of the strategies for proper saving and budgeting at a workshop. They learned that it is important to plan for unforeseen situations. I want to take advantage of the situation the best of my ability, you know, how to budget and how much I can save. You know, so CPEP money is small, I could save $100 out of your pay every fortnight, so I could try to save as much as I can. Although the workshop made Tobagonians aware of the importance of managing their money, they also learned about empowering themselves through entrepreneurship, a path to financial independence. Tobagonians are naturally creative people. Um, we make things, we are able to produce things and really just we can tap into our natural creativity to make more money for ourselves to where we don't have to be reliant on the THA or the government for our sustenance. A Department of Public Health employee, Kershaw Ferguson, says that the information about creating a successful business appealed to him since he is planning to start his own plumbing company. More or less motivate me, in other words, to open my own business. I will be able to... to um, to share and do th things in the community, more or less, to help help my younger ones and so forth. Retirement is another topic which the residents explored, with techniques such as sound record keeping and financial investment. Financial management expert Trisha Beckles says that the residents can have financial security upon retirement. We want to be able, as a people, to advance to the point where, when that time comes to retire, we can relax knowing that the things that we will need financially have already been put in place so that we can live comfortable lives. Whether you want to go on a cruise or whatever you want to do, you are able to afford it. 
The workshop is a collaborative one between the Division of Health and Social Services and the Division of Finance and Enterprise Development. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. During the ancestral walk, the church also displays birth certificates and other documents from the 1800s, along with artifacts highlighting Tobago's rich history. But let's leave that for now and talk a little bit about the subject of clean hands. Davia Chambers reports that having clean hands is one way to ensure a healthy life. This is so important that a day was dedicated to it by the World Health Organization. According to WHO, each year hundreds of millions of patients around the world are affected by healthcare associated infections because of bad hygiene practices. In healthcare, we call that spread nosocomial, hospital acquired, or healthcare acquired infections. And that is a very expensive item in healthcare to treat with. It causes an increase in the number of days a patient may have to stay in the hospital, and it also can result in death. She says there are five rules of hand hygiene that should always be observed. So it's usually before when you enter the patient's environment. You want to have your hands clean so you do not bring anything to the patient with you. Then when you touch the patient to do something for them that is aseptic or what we will call it is something that we don't want the spread of infection to happen we want it to be very sterile so in that instance you need to again clean your hands after you do that you need to clean your hands again after you touch the patient's environment. You may have carried out some duty in there. When you are leaving, you have to do it again. Disease is not only spread in a hospital, but every place. Therefore, the average person must also have proper hand hygiene. Before eating, after going to the washroom or toilet, before handling your food when it's not, and this is not an eating now this is handling your food to cook food or to prepare meals you need to always clean your hands the basic hygiene rules that we learn as children at school and from our parents those are the times ordinarily and of course when you see your hands visibly soiled can't get soap and water then there's hand sanitizer the content of that for hospitals, it has to be 70% alcohol or more. We try not to go to the more because the alcohol too could cause you to get dry hands. Most healthcare associated infections are preventable through good hand hygiene, cleaning hands at the right times and in the right way. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but do stay with us because when we return, we'll tell you how Tobago's netballers are excelling on and off the court. Sit Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact Sit Mariah at 660-0065 or Sit Speyside at 660-6096. Sit 24 hour services, emergencies, medical or other. Sit Pro, the new face of emergency management. The ancestral walk of St. Patrick's Anglican Church promises to be extra special this year as the church is celebrating its 170th anniversary. You just might want to add this event to your social calendar. And speaking of celebrations, Tobago marks 21 years of athletic dominance with a committed group of sport aficionados and athletes. The Department of Sport honored the Tobago Intercall Games Committee and coaches for their commitment to the high school Intercall Track and Field Championships. It was the 21st year in a row that our small island of Tobago brought home the high school Intercall Track and Field Championship title. But with that kind of achievement, there are plans for the team to spread their wings. Coordinator for the Tobago leg of the Intercol Games, Xavier King, says they are considering sporting events outside of Trinidad and Tobago. 
there are various permutations and combinations that we want to look at. Uh, there are ideas banded about that uh, perhaps we need to look beyond Trinidad. But I will leave that for the experts to see whether the money we are spending is in fact well utilized in terms of uh, going to Trinidad every year. And when we look at it, Trinidad is not really organized in terms of the, the, the meet. For the hard work shown by the committee and coaches, Mr. King applauds them for assisting with the success of the Tobago team. I must say part of the reason why we have been doing so well is because we have a well-organized hard-working unit. So I want to congratulate them again for such. Long-standing awards were presented to Handel Dillon, Colin Mark, Wade and Gerard Franklin, and Althea Busby by the Department of Sport at Coco Cafe Restaurant. 125 athletes represented Tobago at the Games. The team returned home with 94 medals, 36 gold, 32 silver, and 26 bronze. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. Each year in the month of August, the St. Patrick Parish celebrates the ancestral walk at Mount Pleasant. This annual event commemorates the four-mile journey made by slaves carrying trays on their heads with bricks for the church's construction. Jane Lovell was the last known slave to do this, and her grave is preserved on the church grounds. Jane died when she was 103 years old, and during the ancestral walk, wreaths are laid on her grave. We'll come back to the church's history in a moment, but next we hear why a group of netballers is being encouraged to become role models in their communities. Netball players from several secondary schools on the island came together to reflect on their performance for the 2012-2013 netball season. But it was not only the sport which was in focus. The players were reminded of maintaining a balanced lifestyle. Combining education with sports has tremendous personal benefits, especially in the areas of teamship, discipline, camaraderie, and wellness. In an effort to encourage the young sportswomen to effectively manage their time between the sport and their academics, the Tobago Netball Zone awards bursaries to those who excel in all areas of their life. This year, bursaries went to Jamalia Edwards of Scarborough Secondary School, Natisha Rajman of Bishops High School, Jerisha Marketchkrain of Signal Hill Secondary School, and Anisia Batiste of Scarborough Secondary. The players were encouraged to continue to practice the lessons they use on the court in their daily lives so they can be seen as good role models. The onus is on you now. I urge you, despite all of those challenges, do not add to the decay. Instead, be the change agents to dispel those negative influences. Tobago netballers have also shown their skill at the national level, with the under-13 and under-15 teams gaining the title of national champions for the 2012-2013 season. The game requires players to travel to Trinidad. And with this understanding, the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport continues to provide support in the areas of transportation, accommodation and other services. I'm Omodara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Turning Tobago's raw talent into an industry is one of the main objectives of the organizers of the Tobago Fashion Weekend. Several of Tobago's up-and-coming designers got the opportunity to share the stage with established designers such as Mailing and Claudia Pegas as Tobago Fashion Weekend 2013 presented Kazakh, Suspenders and Frock. Davia Chambers files this report. The theme was Kazakh, Frock and Suspenders, but there was nothing like traditional clothing on the runway at Tobago Fashion Weekend 2013. 21st century local designers like Dominic Hutchinson, Jess Wey and Chandra Miraj with their striking swimwear shows what a day on the beach looks like. To resort clothing for the modern lady by Juliette Bernard, Lydia Arnold, Cassie Daniel and Heather Jones. 
but regional and international designers also displayed their work with cool, fresh, breezy looks, defining the true Caribbean aesthetic. And kids weren't left out of the mix. But while the runway shows are entertaining, the hope is to really build a sustainable product for the fashion industry here. International designer Romero Bryan shares some tips. In fashion, it's not really about what you know, it's more about who you know um, and brand association. As I said, I'm sponsored by Borovit Fabrics, which supply um, fabrics to the Queen. So really, it's kind of just like... Um, I always say, you got to kiss butt, obviously, and it, it, sorry to use that phrase, but yeah, um, it's all about associating yourself with the relevant parties to make things happen. Tobago Fashion Weekend was held from May 17th to 19th, 2013. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, the viewers. As you're aware, the central government has already begun its public consultation on constitutional reform. So we're asking, do you believe the issue of internal self-government for Tobago should be dealt with separately from the present constitutional reform process? This is what you said. It's Tobago is already good the way it is, and trust me, they're going to spoil it. Well, the Tobago law should be dealt with, dealt with um, personally, right? Then to Trinidad and Tobago because... Right? So, they're supposed to deal with Tobago differently than, than to Trinidad. Because Trinidad has got their own thing. Tobago has got their thing. Right? So, I need to be like Tobago shall deal with, get, get something. Tobago needs something. Plenty of things Tobago need. We'll have more time, in, time with it. They'll have to make the, whatever adjustments for themselves and deal with it, you know, according to their, you know, how they see see it best. I think it should be separate from Trinidad because Tobago is more special in a kind of way. So you should try something different up here than Trinidad instead of making it the same. I find um, Tobago should be, be treated separately because um, you know we could uh, manage on our own and they, we have resources here that we can use in order to develop the country. The central government is in charge of Trinidad and Tobago and I do I do see no reason why the central government shouldn't be in charge of the House Assembly take stock because the House Assembly have to answer to the um, central government. I think that they can both be considered together. I think one impinges on the other, but they need to consider all the concerns of Tobigonians and make sure that is embedded in the Act. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Do remember you can send us your comments to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Like us on Facebook and add us to your YouTube playlist. I'm Colleen Holland. On behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. As we go, here's a final look at the St. Patrick's Anglican Church at Mount Pleasant. Thank you.